the Crux and Blood Entertainment Complex. It's TNSW tonight! Featuring the best band in the world, these New South Wales! And your host, JB Tiffany! Welcome back to TNSW tonight for season, episode three of season one, episode three. It's great to be back. Um, give it up for the house band, These New South Wales. And my brilliant co-host, the bearded pelvis. I love this guitar. Yeah. Oh, it's gone all out of tune. I was playing a little thing before I came on, but it's out of tune. Uh, it's so good to be back in the hot seat. Um, now, a few people were a bit upset um, with, if you remember from last week's episode, I was talking about the fact I've been cast in a movie called Paintball, a feature film directed by Brian Mott about you know, know what it's about, and um, apparently I uh, maybe overstepped the mark and gave away the twist. Um, for that, I am eternally sorry. Um, it, it was not my intention to do so. I am just very excited to be acting, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, what I would like to tell you, which is the good news, <laughs> is that Brian, the writer-director, has gone back to the script. He's opened it back up. He has. Uh, amended the third act and improved upon the twist that I spoiled. Um, not only has he improved upon the original twist, he's also added a fourth act and in the fourth act the twist will literally rip your haircut out of your skull. It is mental. I've never seen a film do it before in my life. Um, I really want to tell them. <laughs> Um, it's just going to be so long before the film comes out, you know what I mean? I, it'd be so good for you to know what it is. I could probably tell them a little, like... Oh, what can I tell them that won't give it a fully away? <laughs> oh, no, nah, I better leave it. Fuck, that's annoying. Um, doesn't matter. Um, no. Anyway, we, it, we've got a, a, a ripper show planned for you tonight. Uh, Let's kick this fucking thing's head off. <laughs> The twist, the new twist in the film is actually that he's been hired by himself to assassinate himself. Just keep it under you. Oh, okay. How are you, Pelvis? I'm pretty good, Jamie. Yourself? Oh, pretty good. Thank you for asking. Mate, um, I think we need to have a bit of a chat, mate. Oh, okay. What about? Well, you should be like David Letterman. Oh. Well, he's a multi-millionaire uh, talkback show host. He comes out. What he does is tells a few jokes. He welcomes the crowd, tells a few jokes, tells them what's going on at the present time, tells them a little bit about the current affairs and things like that. He doesn't tell them about his movie. Yeah, okay. Well, he's not doing a movie. <laughs> he still wouldn't talk about it if he was. Well, how do you know that? Well, because I've watched him countless times. Well, and you think you know him because you've watched the show? No, I don't I know understand. him, but I know how he operates. And, and see, at the end of the day, you will be successful if you follow certain ways. Well, I'm carving, the, I'm carving my own path. You know, if you don't celebrate your own success, who will? You? Well, 
Exactly. I have always celebrated and, and, and thought of you know, you as a great star because that's why you've got this show, yeah. right? Yeah. But the thing is, if you go down the same path all the time and don't change it, you've got to change it all the time for it to actually work properly. The audience can okay. dig and relate. Right. Okay. We've got a great show tonight, guys. Um, very excited. Uh, we've got Johnny Took from the band DMA. <laughs> And Phoebe Tonkin. Hi, I'm Fee Fardy from Fardy Spas. We're slashing all prices on our limited edition, guest operated European spa tubs. Is that a deal I smell? Five, Five bucks for all spas. And as Daddy always used to say, It's only five bucks, but it's still five bucks. Our new and improved guest operated spas now come fully equipped with turbocharged jets and vibrating seats. Once you've confirmed your purchase with Fardy Spas, your new machine will be bubble wrapped and plopped on the next available ship. And if you needed any more convincing, just listen to what some of our most valued customers have to say. We've been coming to Fardy Spas for over 30 years. They're nice and hot. I've got no complaints and these are the best in the business. How good's that? I smell a deal for Mark Fardy's bum. Um, first guest on uh, on tonight's episode is uh, one of he's from one of Australia's biggest rock uh, exports. Uh, one of my favourite bands. He looks exactly like Ramsey Bolton from Game of Thrones, but in a nice way. I mean, uh, and uh, he apparently. He wants kick flip the tent stair with no shoes on. We'll find out how true that is, but... Johnny Talk from DMA is ladies and gentlemen. I, um, <clears throat> I had a feeling you'd be wearing these glasses, and so I asked someone from production to get me a pair of glasses, two just like yours. <laughs> they look great. I think Todd wins, though, out of all of us. Yeah, Todd's a good. Well, thank you very much. Better shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I'll just take these off. Yeah. Um, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are What's you? What's been happening? How's your day been? Uh, great, great. I just bought a, I bought a new Mustang. Oh. A new car. <laughs> a new a 78 Mustang. Oh, Whoa. Yeah. Wow. 78. VA? Uh, no, it's a six string. Oh, a guitar. A guitar, oh. yeah. Oh. Oh. A guitar. I thought he was talking about the car. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were talking about the car. Yeah, <laughs> everyone I've spoken to today thinks I'm pretty cool at that point, and yeah. then they realise it's a guitar and it kind of uh, has less of an effect. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Didn't you have a friend who owned a real Mustang once and he pelvis and he had to he had a special way of keeping it secure oh yeah with the snake yeah yeah tell us about that oh I don't, mate I, yeah uh, long time ago i don't like the pearl it's a good story the tell what's the story tell the story. story tell the fucking story the, the thing is he he had a lot of people wanted to steal his car so he ended up getting a brown snake now the brown snake is the second most deadly Boys, yeah that's right deadly snake and he uh st stuck it in his car so because he could handle brown snakes a bit better with bl brown and black snakes. Thanks, Pelvis. That's so right. with Johnny, you, I understand that you've just finished up a big tour of the UK. That's right. And uh, with uh, someone who's not very famous at all, um, Liam Gallagher. From <laughs> uh, well, I love that guy. He's fantastic. I mean, are you guys friends or what? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, he's cool. He's cool. He's um. You know, we've met a few times now, um, so I guess maybe that's why he got us on the tour. Well, that's like dreams coming true. Yeah, that is know, like childhood like, dreams coming true. Yeah, I remember, you know, Oasis. You know, it's 16 years old. Yeah. The first time we met was actually pretty funny. He comes up to Tommy, he's like, "That song, Timeless, I love it," and then proceeded to sing the song, 
He goes, uh, like, this close to Tommy's face, and he goes, you're timeless, no. And then it was like, I don't know. So, Someone of, like, that caliber singing Singing song your own song back to in you. your face. Pretty cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness me. That's just incredible. Let's talk about... Let's talk about Delete. Delete was the first song you guys put out. It, it's gone platinum. It's gone platinum, right? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Well, can we go to a fact check on that? Fact check that Is Delete one. platinum? Yeah, have you heard Delete Pelvis? No. Oh, okay. You've got to hear it. It's you got amazing. It's quite emotional. Is there, we got headphones or anything back there? That... It's like one of the best Australian songs in the last 10 years. And you've Easy. got to hear it. What's it called? Delete. Delete. Delete? Yeah. Mate. Do you want me to... You can delete that. Let's play it for it's him. It's Johnny's song. <laughs> Johnny. Can we oh, get sorry, the headphones? I've never heard yeah. it, mate. Oh, oh, you've right, got to hear it now. You've got to hear it now. Yeah, well, it's, I still have that. Thanks, Tom. Oh, I have, sir. Yeah, oh, I have of course you fucking name. have. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I just didn't know the name, that's all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, this is a good song. Yeah, it's all right, mate. I just didn't know the name. So I'm... tell us a little bit about how that song came about. Um, I'm... We'd been in bands before, so we'd kind of realised that it doesn't work just having your first nine songs that you've ever written and trying to play them and then you've maybe four friends come. Yeah. I don't know if you've had this, a similar experience. Definitely. And, uh, yeah. I mean, and we, yeah, wrote so, uh, we wrote 180 odd songs before we put out any of them. John, I mean, at first, I did, when you said the name, when Jamie said the name, I didn't get it. But when I listened, I went, oh, yes, I've heard that a few times. Mate, great song, mate. That's brilliant. How do you feel? Oh, relax. <laughs> it's a relax. <laughs> it's not wrong. I almost went to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the that effect, yeah. A little birdie tells me that you are not too bad on the old harmonica. Uh, I would... I don't know, I don't know. Oh, I, he's humble. That you can't play a note out of key on a harmonica. OK. If well, you, you know, I'm going to throw that out there. OK, <laughs> all right, well, yeah. You know, there isn't a wrong note. Yeah, OK, great. Well, I came up with the idea that maybe we could have a little bit of a harmonica jam. <laughs> yeah, because I'm actually not too bad on the harmonica myself. <laughs> and I know you brought yours with you. Um, let's, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. I stand corrected. Well, you can was... play wrong notes on the harmonica. Oh, get out of here. Oh, <laughs> that, was that was good fun. You sounded good. <laughs> um, so ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> Johnny oh, Took oh, from DMAs. Thank you. All right, stick around, stick with us. We'll be back with Benny Tonkin. How's it going on? Aaron Dude here. 
internet is on my computer, and I got up a new song review for you. It's Soak Me in Bleach by Amnesty Infliction. Quite apt title for current day. One of the main cures for COVID, if you got it, is Bleach. Just kidding, I think. Okay, so it's mainly quiet piano music right now, so I'm gonna turn it up a bit. Okay, so basically it was quite a loud song in the end, and I give it 194 decibels. Pretty loud. That's the loudest you can go up to, but that's just my opinion. Welcome back. What'd you do on the break? Did you go to the bathroom, you get a snack. Doesn't matter, whatever you did was fine because you're back, and that's the main point. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> Our next guest is a famous celebrity actor. She's an international it girl, and she has more Instagram followers than the bloody population of New Zealand. <laughs> that's a fact. Phoebe Tonkin, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, how's it going? Good, thank you for having me here. Oh, please don't thank me. Thank you. Thank you. No, we are absolutely exciting. wrapped to have you. <laughs> what's, been, what's been happening? You're just back from Bali, I hear? Just got back from a holiday in Bali with my mum. Oh, yes, it was, really ni it was really nice. <laughs> have you been? I have, once. I went to Kuta and I love Kuta. Yeah. Um, because you, you can, you know, there's all sorts of different, you can buy clothes and you can buy bags and, and it's also cheap. It is. Are you a good haggler? I, you know, my skills at first, I felt, you know, I felt a bit shy about it, but everyone's like, that's what you do there. You haggle. <laughs> you know, it's like, they say 10 bucks for this shirt. You say, no, no, five. You know, and then you close the deal and you walk away with... <laughs> But um, yeah, it was it was really amazing. Okay, it was so really where were you? Trip. Were you in? Co I Kuna? was in Ubud. Ubud. Yes, Ubud. and I actually did this really cool thing. I don't know if you've ever done or anyone here's done. It's called a sound bath. Oh, sounds like my um, cup of tea. And it's yeah, it's like For a, a muso, sound bath. Yeah, yeah, yes, right. Please. So it's like a, a big temple, and you kind of you go and you lie on these mattresses, and they kind of dim the lights, and it's this quite immersive meditative experience and you basically just lie in this big temple and and all these kind of musical instruments and drums and things play and it was really amazing i think they got them in fiji i've got a funny feeling they got them in fiji they have one in i think joshua tree as well my friend's gone to it's really cool wow. well that's probably why uh, where they got youtube yeah joshua tree there you go yeah <laughs> so yeah, I did that. It was cool. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And, and and what's this? Uh, what's this dress? Who yeah. made it? Where's it's it from? Actually, my best friend made this dress. Um, and I was thinking when I when I was on my way here, this dress reminded me of this terrible audition um, that I had <laughs> okay. a few years ago. Um, I was. Um, this was many, many years ago when I had just moved to LA and I was going to so many auditions kind of back to back and there was one that I didn't really have time to read the entire script so I, I went to this audition and I had misread the sides, the, the kind of audition scenes and I thought it was period so I dressed in like this kind of full period dress and made my braided my hair I look like something out of you know an Austin movie or something <laughs> and um then I got the feedback the next day and they were like and my agent said you know they really liked you but you um, I'm so sorry I have what? to interrupt just quickly you got like a piece of seaweed or spinach or something on you just on the oh my god sorry <sighs> I'm so sorry sorry <laughs> <laughs> That's so embarrassing. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, usually it's the last thing. What I'll do is just before I come out on stage, I'll just have a quick look in the mirror, quick yeah. scan, make sure there's nothing in there. I just didn't because, do Just because, yeah, oh, I learned the hard way. Oh. <laughs> and now you, you have too. Sorry, I wish you had it just told me that like, before I came out. It's really embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. You want to tell a fucking story? It's really embarrassing. Why didn't your fucking producer tell me? Well, they probably didn't see. I'm sorry, we weren't laughing at you, we are just more laughing at the situation. It's fine. It's fine. Jamie, you should have sounded a little bit more etiquette, mate, and you should have just leaned over and told her, not voice it in front of the audience, mate. Yeah, well, I understand that. Well, mate, at the end of the day, Jesus, you could have just leaned over and gone, just check, blah, blah. Yeah. But you didn't, you went, ah, oh, look, you got something in your mouth, check your mouth. 
when I realised what you'd said. Well... Jesus, mate. Well, you... I mean, you tried doing this job, mate. She's in the middle of a story. Mate, at the end of the day... At the end of what day? What day are you the, talking about, you now, fool? At the end of now, wake up yourself, because you're not really... You're not portraying a proper host, oh, mate. what would you know about portraying a oh, host? What, you don't think I've been uh, a co-host before? I know you've been a co-host. Have you tried being the host? Oh, it's not that hard, mate. It's oh, just use a bit of... How would mate, you know? A bit of, dot, a bit of common sense, A bit of mate. dot what? A bit of CDF, mate, common sense. Oh, CDF, how does... S? I'm not going to tell you because there's a lady... Well, I'm going to tell you this. You're fired. What? You're fired. No, no, no. Ah, yeah, right. No, I've had enough of it. You're fired. Uh, Get uh, off my fucking set. Get of off my state. fucking set! I'm sorry about the, the embarrassment here, Phoebe and John. How long's it going to take for him to get off my set? Well, I mate, <laughs> sorry, ladies and gentlemen, about this, but we have a clown in front of us. Well, honk, mate, honk. Yeah, well, then stick that up, you clacker. Sit on it and do what Oliver done. Twist. Stick your job up your ass. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Will do. Yeah, up you. Get it. Sorry, out of boys. Here. And you're a great band and always will be. Well, Pelvis is gone. <laughs> and I, for one, am happy because it's just so annoying to take such constant stream of criticism from someone who's supposed to be on your team. We're all doing our best up here. I'm sorry, Phoebes. I'm sorry. I if I could rewind it and do it, my, do it over again, I would have told you earlier. The thing is, is that I normally just check before I go out on stage. It's the last thing I do. I have a quick look in the mirror. I have a quick scan through the teeth, make sure there's nothing in there. Um, yeah. Well, I've got a gift for you. <laughs> Maybe that will lighten the mood. Um, I, what I do is I pick a, I hand pick a gift. I know you've just moved to, I won't say too much. I know you've just moved to New York. I thought this might be appropriate. So just, I think you'll like it. Honestly, you will. Thanks. Open it now. Open it, open it, open it. <laughs> it's Sex and the City, both of the movies. Oh, well, one of the movies. So it's supposed to be two, but we took the second one out because apparently it's a bit racist. So you've got the first Sex and the City film there. Well, guys, that's, that's the end of the episode. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please give it up for Phoebe Tonkin and Johnny Took from DMAs. Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs> <laughs>